120 eggs per month, roughly four eggs per day, pretty much every day. And if I miss a day, sometimes I'll add more another day. Some months I have closer to 150 eggs. I've had some months where I've had more than that. And my biomarkers are quite good. As a matter of fact, there was a pretty wicked cool study that came out in 2023 I took a look at the nutrient density in eggs and it looked at people that consumed eggs and it really validated a lot of what I felt to begin with. But I'm gonna talk about a little of my own experience and I'm gonna talk about some of the things and the reasons as to why I would eat so many eggs, such a ridiculous amount of eggs and why I've been doing so for the last, I guess about two and a half or three years eating that many. Anyhow, let's dive into it. Before we get into it, I put a link down below for 25% off Seed Symbiotic. That is a prebiotic and a probiotic in one capsule. And yeah, they're a sponsor on this channel, but they're also the probiotic that I use. And they're literally the only probiotic I would recommend because they're the only one that has technology that I think actually makes some sense. A multi-stage delivery where they have a capsule inside of a capsule. They also have tons of clinical trials that they have published themselves, putting their money where their mouth is. Because when it comes down to it, in most things, I'm willing to trust. But when it comes down to things I'm putting in my body, I legitimately wanna see the data. So if you're making any kind of dietary change and you're looking to add a probiotic in, definitely check that out. That link for 25% off is in the top line of the description underneath this video. First, I'm gonna open up by talking about choline. There have been multiple hit pieces on eggs talking about choline being problematic. We have what is called a choline pool in our body. We need choline. There is a neurotransmitter that is called acetylcholine. It is arguably one of the most important neurotransmitters just for a neuron to be able to really function. You see, choline sits at the edge of a nerve cell, okay? It sits at the, what is called the synaptic cleft. So when an action potential, like basically, just like the name implies, the potential for an action travels down a nerve, travels down a neuron, it gets to the end and it gets to where the synaptic cleft is and it hits acetylcholine, this neurotransmitter. And that acetylcholine essentially jumps across the gap to another neuron to continue this action potential, to continue to do anything, to do this, to blink, to this, right? If you run out of choline, it's gonna become a process of efficiency where it's going to allow acetylcholine to function in only the most critical parts, right? If we have an abundance of choline, then we can function better. And choline is unique because it crosses the blood-brain barrier and we have a lot of neurons in the brain. So there's no wonder that eggs are legitimate brain food. Okay, because choline is half of the acetylcholine in the first place. You can't build acetylcholine without choline. Problem is, is people don't have basic fundamental understanding of like the most important neurotransmitters in our body. Choline, or acetylcholine, we've got dopamine, serotonin, GABA, epinephrine, these ones that we hear about, but we don't understand how important they are. I can't explain to you how important choline is. So when I started to find that my brain was just not firing the way that it used to, I increased the egg content. Then we look at lutein. Lutein is touted as just this antioxidant for the eyes because there's lutein supplements and zeaxanthin supplements. It's like lutein is not just for the eyes. It accumulates in the brain and it is one of the most powerful antioxidants and ways to drive down reactive oxygen species that we know of. It is so potent. In fact, there is some literature out there that supports that it could be stronger than some of these other really expensive antioxidants that we take where we try to get in through other sources. So that orangish yellowish pigment that we see in an egg, that isn't just carotenoids or beta carotene from carrots that the chicken ate. That definitely plays a role, but there's lutein that is actually giving it that color. Just to give you context, like one of the concentrated sources of lutein in this world is gonna be a marigold. And look at the color of a marigold flower, right? It is a potent source of lutein. Point is, we are looking at one of the most powerful antioxidant-rich foods, yet we are led to believe that it's only fruits and vegetables, which I have no problem with. I love my fruits and veggies, but eggs are there too. Not to mention the B vitamin profile, not to mention just the various nutrient density. And if we wanna talk a little bit about the immune system, which I'm not gonna go down that rabbit hole too much because it's hard to talk about immune system stuff on YouTube to begin with. Bottom line is, 
Eggs seem to have the nice profile when it comes down to vitamin D, when it comes down to vitamin A, when it comes down to zinc and selenium in such a ratio that it's almost replicable in other studies See so that that is a really good ratio for fighting off pathogens. It seems to be very strong for the immune system, which would make sense because it contains just about everything that a chicken needs to really grow and mature and probably develop an immune system. So I'll leave that there. And then I want to jump over to the fat profile for a moment. But before I get into the details of the fat profile, I want to talk about something because people think there's cholesterol in eggs, there's fat in eggs, so it's bad, right? Okay, well, let's look at this 2023 study that was published in Nutrients. It was a University of Connecticut study, and it was quite interesting. They took a look at a large body of people that consumed eggs on the daily, daily egg consumption. One of the first things they noticed within this is, hey, what do you know? Their choline levels increased. Their choline levels went up. Well, who would have thought? Eggs are rich in choline, so their choline pool went up. But they saw zero increase in metabolites that were linked to cardiovascular or cardiometabolic disease, even though eggs have cholesterol. Well, I don't want to get into the cholesterol discussion too much, but the bottom line is that there's a lot more to cholesterol than just what we take in through the diet. The body tends to regulate it fairly well. And when we get into the fatty acid profile of eggs, some of it might even make some more sense. There was no increase in cholesterol, no increase in inflammation, and no increased risk of type 2 diabetes. Now, when you look at the big picture, people that might consume a lot of saturated fats might also be consuming a lot of not so good, maybe more nefarious suspects in their diet. So you could draw some inference and make an objective observation that maybe people that consume high amounts of these foods are going to have higher rates of diabetes. But there's a lot more going on. Simply being sedentary could be a trigger for that. The point is, is that they saw in this literature this University of Connecticut study that nutrient values, nutrient density within the body went up. So they actually saw more nutritional just content. There was more nutrient density in people that were consuming eggs. In addition to that, there also seemed to be a pretty strong link with an increase in red blood cells, which means that people that are anemic, people, even without a ton of iron in eggs, right, you're getting this increase there that could be helping out with oxygen delivery, could be helping out with just red blood cells in general. But now the big piece. I think the thing that people overlook the most is that eggs are close to 40 to 45% monounsaturated fats. Do you know how much monounsaturated fat is in olive oil? About 70%. So olive oil is touted as this like amazing monounsaturated fat food, which it is. Olive oil is amazing. But eggs are not far off. People think eggs, they automatically think saturated fat. You're looking more like maybe 25 to 30% saturated fat. Whereas even with olive oil, you're still looking at maybe 12 or 13% saturated fat. And I think it's more like 8 to 13%, depending on which kind. So bottom end is there's still going to be saturated fat even in olive oil. And even with eggs, you're looking still maybe 15% polyunsaturated fats. You're getting some omega-3s, some omega-6s but not that, that much. The point is, is that between the monounsaturated fats and the polyunsaturated fats, you're looking largely non-saturated fats that are in eggs in the first place. So it's confusing to me as to why it comes under fire so much. You would be having a considerably worse fatty acid profile if that was what you looked at if you had coconut oil. And I don't really have a problem with coconut oil, although nowadays I would much rather have tallow than coconut oil. The point is, is that the fatty acid profile of eggs is much closer to olive oil than it is to even the traditional saturated fats that we think of. So if someone is looking at, hey, like what's the best kind of food that I can have that's going to have probably the least amount of overall risk with the biggest upside, in multiple different areas, including nutrient density, I would say eggs are pretty darn potent there. But let's not forget the fact that they are one of the most complete amino acid profiles that you could possibly get. So when it comes down to providing your body with the pool of aminos that it needs for a multitude of different functions, not to mention satiety, and here's what's funny, is people think that eggs are calorically dense. You know, for the amount of volume that you actually get in an egg, they're not that ridiculously calorically dense. Like you think about a hard boiled egg and you're thinking 60 to 80 calories depending on the size. That's not that calorically dense. 
an equal amount of peanut butter, like in that size, is probably going to be three or 400 calories. Maybe, yeah, probably about 300. So I think we need to reframe how we look at eggs in terms of just the nutrient quality. Anything in excess could be problematic. Personally, I eat 120 eggs per month, and I've never felt better. I'll see you tomorrow.